Excellent. So we've uh, got a quorum. Uh, therefore, I will call this meeting to order. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, it is Thursday, February 4th, 2021 at uh, approximately 7.08. Good to see everyone. I will call the special, um, the Public Safety Committee special meeting to order. All Councilors are present, uh, committee members are present, which consists of uh, myself as chair, Councilor Bordelon, as well as our newest member, uh, Councilor Franco. I would like to uh, welcome Fra uh, Councilor Franco to our committee um, and look forward uh, to working with you uh, just uh, as we do on, on the town council. Um, communications, um, again, uh, w welcoming our newest member, um, uh, for folks who have been watching the Public Safety Committee meetings, um, Councillor Conrad Heed served on our committee uh, and participated in discussions. And now um, Councillor uh, Franco uh, will be replacing him. Um, and um, again, looking forward to working with you, Councillor Franco. Um, always uh, appreciate the open lines of communication, even if we don't always agree on the issues. Um, I think that's the way we should be conducting um, uh, business uh, in, uh, you know, in our town anyway. Um, is to, um, you know, so that um, uh, constituents, uh, no matter um, uh, the issue, uh, understand that uh, their leaders uh, can uh, agree to disagree at times, um, but also work to find a common ground. Um, so um, I've uh, committed that to you and as you have to me. Um, and uh, again, look, look forward to working with you uh, as well as uh, Council Board One. Um, uh, communications, um, uh, happy to turn it over to either uh, Councilor Franco or Councilor Board One. I have no communications. Uh, Councilor Bordelon? I have no communications at this time. All right, so um, I will uh, entertain a motion to approve um, a slate of uh, committee meeting minutes. Uh, this is our first <coughs> um, public safety <coughs> meeting where um, we have not held a joint uh, meeting with Cork. Um, therefore, um, we do have some housekeeping. Um, we have to actually approve um, some meeting minutes from uh, previous meetings. Um, and so I will uh, read those out. Um, and um, Lisa did uh, disseminate and distribute those meeting minutes to the entire councilor, uh, uh, to the entire council earlier. Um, so I will list uh, those meeting minutes uh, as well. Uh, they consist of the meeting minutes for uh, September 10th. I'm sorry, for um, uh, September 10th, 2020, for uh, August uh, uh, August 20th, 2020, for September 23rd, 2020, and for, uh, I believe that is uh, 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 October 7th, 2020. Uh, so moved. Or uh, I will entertain a motion to approve. <laughs> <in a minute. laughs> motion. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Or uh, any discussion? <laughs> uh, seeing none, uh, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed? Uh, any abstentions? I'm going to abstain. All right. Uh, motion passes uh, two uh, voting for, uh, no against, and one abstention. The first item and only item on our agenda is the review of policing pol uh, of police policies. Um, as um, many know who have been following our committee work, um, uh, the court committee, which is the Civilian uh, Review Oversight Committee, uh, composed of uh, a bipartisan group of RTM members, uh, worked hard um, at the uh, end of fall uh, end or um, throughout the fall and. Uh, towards the end of the winter, um, researching the merits of uh, revamping uh, police policies here in town, uh, offered a set of recommendations as to um, what the police, police department uh, could be doing differently um, with respect to uh, interacting with the public and um, their work. Um, again, and I've say, say this on the record, um, we are fortunate to have a, a great police department here. Um, I um, have... Um, had the privilege of um, working directly with police officers um, um, in 
uh, my personal life as well as civically. Uh, all of those interactions have been pub uh, have been positive, um, and um, and uh, those uh, interactions and experiences uh, also stem from um, my brother who is in the with, who has um, uh, autism, and um, uh, having to call nine one one because of um, uh, you know um, uh, sometimes um, you know moments get the best of them, and um, police. Um, uh, um, responded in a way that was um, not only helpful, helpful to our family, but also uh, created inter an introduction to my brother uh, with our, our local law enforcement. And um, e each and every time he has had interactions, whether it's with the town or the city police departments have been incredibly positive. So again, I wanna thank uh, the leadership of Chief Fasaro um, and, um, and, um, and you know, thank our, our police department, especially during these um, uh, trying times. Um, with that being said, um, you know, uh, as a you know member of a community, our community, and certainly as a person of color, um, you know I'm taking great interest in ensuring that we do have a police department um, that um, um, you know meets our standards um, for um, you know properly uh, engaging the public and working with our public, and um, and is on, understands that the, the diversity of our community is our greatest strength, and that it's important that we have a police department that works hand in hand uh, with our um, you know, with uh, every person in our community. Um, and uh, I say that uh, because of, um, you know, in the aftermath of the killing of George Floyd um, throughout the country uh, and even uh, somewhat locally, um, many folks uh, did begin, begin to, um, um, you know, have misgivings about their, their police departments and um, began scrutinizing um, uh, policies and procedures of those police departments. Again, it is nothing uh, personal, right? It's nothing, um, you know, it, it's, um, you know, um, doing this research is not um, by any, um, you know, by any stretch um, re reflective or indicative of, um, you know, um, town leaders or community members having a personal animus towards uh, police officers or pl the police department, uh, but more so that, um, you know, uh, our, our group um, needed to, and our, our local government needed to heed the call to um, um, begin reviewing these policies um, just as um, many other communities throughout uh, the state and our nation have, uh, again, in the aftermath of the killing of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. Um, and so um, I think we did our, our, our work, um, you know, and, and uh, certainly want to commend uh, the RTM court committee for uh, doing that research. It was not easy. There are at times that emotions ran high, but that's the way, um, in my opinion, uh, we uh, um, uh, identify and, and, and create good policy work is when you uh, engage the public, uh, you elicit feedback, uh, and you have very hard discussions about, um, uh, you know, our uh, systems uh, in place that, um, you know, um, we have to ensure that our uh, all community members uh, remain safe. Um, and so um, just wanted to again state that on the record um, and um, appreciate the chief for for joining us as well as a uh, court uh, chair uh, um, and Representative Ian Thomas for joining us, as well as our, our town manager. Uh, very much look forward to our, our discussion. Um, but uh, if it's okay with our uh, council, um, I would like to um, um, to turn things over to um, Representative Thomas to provide a brief um, synopsis of his work uh, on Cork, um, and also uh, describe uh, the consensus recommendations that uh, Cork committee made. Um, just to um, just uh, one one quick point um, tonight, I don't anticipate that we will be voting out any policy changes um, over the uh, coming uh, weeks. Um, I hope this committee um, will um, move forward with uh, recommendations made by Cork, um, and at the very least, um, you know, and, and as I mentioned to both um, uh, Councillors Franco and Bordelon, uh, the consensus recommendations that had the support of each and every. Um, court committee member. Uh, so with that, I will turn it over to uh, Chairman Thomas. Um, and um, before I, I turn it over to Chairman Thomas, um, I do know that we have both Chief Chief Fasaro and, and um, uh, Deputy Chief uh, Gately on as well. Um, uh, thank you for joining us, um, um, uh, Deputy Chief Gately. Um, do you plan on, um, uh, I, I'm sure you're here to listen, but it would be happy to turn things over to you um, if you know, if you'd like to have, um, offer any comments. Uh, thanks, Councillor Bungard. I, I appreciate the work of this committee and the court committee. I, I've, I've had the opportunity to read 
uh, the report that they put together. I knew they, they put a lot of time and energy into that, and that's evident. And I do appreciate um, your comments about the, the quality of policing in Groton, as well as uh, uh, the Corps Committee's uh, discussions that we've had about what we're, we're trying to do as an agency. And um, certainly our partner agencies elsewhere in Groton, are, I, I know, are, are poised to be successful. Um, we're committed to have an effective policing strategy and work with both uh, our elected leaders and town manager, as well as our partner agencies to make sure that we provide the best services for the town. I do believe in accountability. Uh, I've said that uh, time and time again. And I, I, I couldn't help but notice when I first read this report that it started off with the Pelion principles, uh, which I had the opportunity to review with, uh, with um, the court committee and members. And um, um, ironically, I taught a supervisor class today and that was the first topic of discussion. So. Um, thanks for that. I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions. I'm glad Deputy Chief Gately is here because he is the department's policy guru. So when it comes to policies and, and uh, uh, what we're doing as far as revamping all of our department policies, he's been the, the, the tip of the spear on that. And I appreciate his work and he does that uh, in addition to many other things, but he's been doing an exceptional job on it. Look forward to keeping that moving. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Deputy Chief Gately, um, do you or would you like to offer any comments? He, um, I'm sorry, he just texted me and says for some reason he's not able to speak. It doesn't look like um, he's got a direct, he, he's on, but for whatever reason, I, I don't think he's able to unmute. All right. Um, uh, maybe uh, Manager Burt, um, if you can work with uh, Deputy Chief Gately on his um, uh, providing him uh, those permissions, if he if he doesn't have them already. Um, and um, while we're um, awaiting um, that, I will turn things over uh, to uh, Chairman Thomas, uh, Chair Thomas, uh, to provide an overview of uh, the court committee report. Thank you so much, Chair Thomas, for your work. Uh, this report was comprehensive. Uh, it reflected um, the uh, not just the will of the uh, uh, core committee, um, and you know the con uh, you know that being the consensus recommendations, but also uh, you included the individual recommendations of each core committee member, which I think is uh, very valuable. It shows um, you know that uh, each member ha ha has um, uh, varying dis uh, viewpoints, um, and um, you know that despite. Um, the fact that most members are are either Democrat or you know and, and uh, Republican that we um, we are are all diverse thinkers and um, and uh, I think that's you know that's important to to note you know um, here um, but um, again thank you for joining us and uh, happy to turn it over to you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Bumgardner, and thank you to the committee as a whole, and uh, thanks for the chief uh, and deputy chief as well. Um, yeah, just to be brief, uh, you know, pretty much everything we did, we put into the report. Um, hold on one second. Okay, uh, sorry about that. Um, so, yeah, just a uh, I'd like to thank my fellow committee, uh, court committee members as well. Um, uh, Representative Melinda Cassieri, uh, Susan Dean Shinbrot, Bruce Flax, Lauren Gauthier, Autumn Hanscom, Kate Richards, and Jill Rusk all put in uh, a lot of uh, effort and time to, uh, to put this report together and to uh, put, their, put their brains into this, into this work. Um, Long story short, uh, we started out with a sort of a brief overview, as, as Chief Fasaro noted, we uh, referred to his referring to the Pelian principles during one of the interviews uh, when, he, when he sat with our committee. And uh, on reading those, I thought that was a great uh, baseline to uh, a great touchstone for any um, approach to community police relationships. Um, and then, uh, so the, the report basically has six sections to it. Uh, the first section is about historical context, uh, you know, looking at community police relations and, and how that's done uh, in general. 
and um, you know some ideas of how civilian review boards have have come to exist. And then uh, the second section, we look at basic models of civilian review boards, which one of the main takeaways of all our research was that uh, there's a whole myriad of, of variations and a whole spectrum of, of from like pretty much no oversight whatsoever to very strict and um, rigid, um, almost micromanaging of a police department. Um, so in, in between those two extremes is a whole wide array of options that any community could come and kind of piecemeal something together that works for them. Um, so what we try to do is focus on, on boiling down to a few basic categorical models and then some features that those models could have plugged into them. Um, and then looked at, and then the third section, uh, we looked at the current model of oversight in Groton. And then that led right into the fourth section, which where we looked at uh, what options exist for the town of Groton. And that's where we went back to the categorical models and looked at how those categor categorical models, those basic ones, could relate to our town um, and the town charter and the town manager situation and, and the existing um, balance of power that we have set up and established. And if we wanted to, as a community, uh, make any, adopt any of these categorical models, what would have to happen in order for, for that to occur? Um, and we, you know, this is based on interviews with town attorney, other attorneys and, and uh, various stakeholders in the community and other communities that, that have done these sort of things. Um, and then the fifth section, we have a, uh, uh, the committee came together and, and we went through all our individual opinions and found what we agreed on, consensus points that were through lines that connected all of our individual recommendations. And so we created a section that was consensus goals and recommendations of the committee. And so it's, it's about three or four um, main points that we thought would, would be, that we all agreed on that would be good steps for the community to move forward with. Um, and then there's the appendix. That's a series of uh, the individual opinions that you mentioned, where each individual committee, a committee member uh, wrote a section of, of what they felt would be good for the community uh, based on their research and experience. And then there's also a number of reference materials and resources that we leaned on that we thought would be interesting to have attached to the report, but weren't integral to the report for it to be cohesive. So the appendix is just kind of some extra information along with the individual recommendations. So uh, with that, I encourage everyone to read through it and, and um, you know, kind of, you know, tangle with what's in there and, and, and tease it out and, and see, you know, what, what comes of it, I think is a great start point. Um, I'm proud of the work that we did on that. Although I'm sure there's still a couple of typos in there. So, you know, we, we did our best. Um, and uh, yeah, I just wanna thank my fellow committee members and, uh, and this committee as well uh, for uh, being part of the process. With that, I, I yield the floor. Do any counselors have questions for Chair Thomas? I'd just like to thank uh, the court committee for all the work that they did. I watched uh, all the meetings and I think they put a lot of work and energy into this and it was very in, um, thoughtfully put together and insightful. And I appreciate the consensus that they brought forward. Uh, Councilor Bordelon. Hi, can you hear me? I've been on a computer all day. I'm about sick of computers. So here we go again, another computer. Um, no, I, I, I too think it was great. Um, I got to hear some of the discussion. Um, you know, I would tone in and listen um, to the audio of it. So I wanna thank all the people involved that worked together. And, you know, I think it was great 
um, that the uh, moderator of the uh, RTM um, made it a priority and put this forward. Um, but one of the best things about the whole process of this was the fact that you got to see bipartisanship, district-wide support from all the different districts involved. And um, it really represented, I think, uh, a broad base of all areas of the town um, from all different backgrounds. So it had district representation, it had bipartisan support. And, and I think that that speaks volumes and it's great to see anything come out of it, no matter what is done with it, just to have that type of in-depth conversation and one of the firm belief, beliefs that I have is being able to discuss things, even if you don't agree, but being able to value the other person's opinion and deliberate through that and say, you know, I really don't agree with that point. And it's okay to say that. It's okay to not really feel the same way as somebody else, but at the end of the day, it's not a personal thing. And so I just want to thank them because they really did work on some tough topics and they did it with decorum and respect and things that showed the process to really hold true to what it, what it should be. So thank you. Uh, well, well articulated and um, also want to make a shout out to our RTM uh, moderator, uh, Sima Eben for uh, establishing the court committee. Um, you know, one of the, the downsides of, of this, you know, having a public safety committee uh, is that, um, you know, we, um, it did not have any membership, of course, of our RTM members who are uh, elected individually by uh, their respective districts. Um, and in, in many cases, um, you know, it, it is the only legislative body that does have a bipartisan representation. Um, so you, as Councilor Bordelon stated, you get a, a great cross section of our community. Um, and um, I think that feedback is, is important. So, um, you know, I, I thank again, Cork for being partners with us uh, in this process. You've done the lion's share of the work, um, you know, um, get putting together the report uh, and, and now it is incumbent on uh, this committee uh, and the council as a whole to move forward with um, uh, your recommendations. Um, and so um, my question, I do have a question for, um, count, um, for Representative Thomas. Um, in the uh, section um, that sort of, um, uh, provides the historical context. Um, you throw out three questions with respect to civilian oversight. Uh, the three questions being, is this practice an appropriate fit for our local context? Uh, how will this practice strengthen civilian oversight in relation to the 13 principles for effective oversight? And what are the potential unattended consequences of implementing this practice? Um, so, um, I guess my question to you is, uh, how, how would you answer uh, those three questions, um, uh, Chair Thomas? Uh, well, that depends much on what form of oversight uh, the committee decides to move forward with. Um, those are basically just guiding questions. So the idea would be like you would look at a, a, one of the categorical models of, of oversight, and then you would apply those three questions uh, to that model when relating it to the community and the police department in that community. So, um, so it all depends on, on what you're looking to do, uh, really. Um, you know, as far as like what would be an appropriate fit. Uh, yeah, I don't want to get lost in the weeds on that as, as far as, you know, it, it, it depends on what you really want to try to try to do with civilian oversight, you know, identify the needs of the community, you know, are there problem areas, have there been historical issues in any area that that have some sort of uh, um, data or pattern set that, you know, you, you would like an oversight body to try to address and mitigate. Um, I, I think that's one way you could try to approach it if we're going to try to reverse engineer um, off of these questions, you know, trying to uh, you know, gauge what model or what categorical model would be best uh, for Groton. Um, the 13 principles, uh, yeah, that's one of those. Uh, so that those thir that 13 list of 13 principles is actually in the appendix. Um, and that came from the National Association for Civilian Oversight, N-A-C-O-L-E. Civilian Oversight of Law Enforcement, yes. Um, it came from their uh, presentation. 
and uh, the so I, I don't want to belabor those points necessarily, but unless you really want to get into them, um, the uh, 13 principles are basically just again like you know ways to kind of frame how you how you analyze what's happening in your community and how the police department relates to the community um and then uh the third question sorry i just lost the page here um oh the unintended consequences that's the most important one i think actually like so as you try to apply the categorical model that you may be leaning towards or you think could be useful, you want to kind of game that out and look at, you know, what, how could this be uh, misinterpreted or misused or, um, you know, what could be some unintended consequences, really, like the phrase that says, um, you know, things that happen that you didn't really anticipate or want to have happen that could be a, a byproduct of, of a certain policy or practice. So it's, it's a cautionary question to, to make sure that, you know, there's some critical thought applied and that, you know, it, it, these sorts of issues, it's real easy to, to get caught up in the emotion of the moment. And, um, you know, either from the citizen side or from the police side, you know, and, and have like a, an emotional reaction to what should be um a, a logical a problem and um so it's important to kind of just keep things in check and move slow and and deliberately and i would imagine just from participating you know having joint meetings um and following your your work um you know when when y'all went solo with the research i would imagine that question was the most difficult to find, kind of uh, identify consensus for with uh, amongst committee members, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but that that was my takeaway. Um, yeah, there was there's a lot of discussion about you know anticipation of of reaction and action and and perception. Perception was definitely a a, a challenging. It's a challenging point, you know, as far as like how things are perceived versus how they're intended. Do uh, any other counselors have uh, follow-up questions? I I have questions related to um, the consensus for possibly the town manager and the chief and the deputy chief possibly. I didn't know what direction um, the meeting was going to go in. Are we are we going to go through the consensus uh, one at a time each line? Um, I, that is uh, up to committee members. Um, again, we're not voting on, um, you know, I'm, I, I don't have any prepared motion uh, for this evening, but, um, you know, I, I think we can start going through those um, consensus recommendations, perhaps how uh, the committee arrived to, you know, finding consensus on an item. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of hot topics that um, did not become consensus. Uh, and also uh, sort of curious and, and don't want to overstep your, your, um, overstep you in your line of questioning either, uh, Councilor Franco, um, but maybe a, just a quick follow-up uh, to that, uh, to Chair, Chair Thomas, um, you know, um, how once the committee arrived to a consensus, even within the consensus recommendations, was there sort of varying viewpoints um, before arriving at it, you know, a consensus? So I know that was a loaded question, um, you know, that I, I um, um, just asked uh, along with, uh, what Councillor Franco asked. So if you want to take a stab at both of those uh, questions. Uh, that was directed towards me as far yeah. as, yeah. Um, yeah, so of, of course, yeah, the process of getting those consensus recommendations was a process. It took some time and a lot of discussion. Um, yeah, I, I can, I don't want to speak too broadly on behalf of the committee you know, obviously, like, they should all speak for themselves. Um, but I can say that, you know, it, we all feel very comfortable with the consensus recommendations. Um, 
and I'm strongly, you know, as far as like those being uh, good next steps um, for the community. As far as how we got there, you know, it's on the tape. <laughs> you, uh, it, it took some time and it took a lot of discussion. I hope that answers your question. I, it answered my question. Did it answer yours, Councillor Franco? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've watched all the meetings, so I sort of have my own takeaway from how it all went myself. Um, I saw how they deliberated and came to a consensus myself. Um, as a as the consensus, um, like I was just wondering, like. Um, option number one, where the civilian complaints and the associated findings should be visible, available on the town's website for the public to view is number one. So I wanted to follow up and see with the chief how that, that how that's going and has he had any issues with that? Because he has already implemented that as if I'm, not, I think, I believe so. Uh, chief Asaro? Uh Yes. We have, um, yeah, we do, we provide that information. We have that available. Um, I did provide it months ago to the court committee, I believe, and I, I know I provided it to the manager. It is something that we're able to I think your internet's locking up a little bit. <laughs> people i'm sorry you were you were locked up your internet was locked up sorry chief you'll have to start from the top again <laughs> <laughs> all right any can you hear me now any yes, better sir. um we have tried to do that we've tried to uh, we as you have all uh, learned through the course of this process is that we have uh, we keep pretty good records of that certainly all the complaints that come in we are we have a policy regarding what we're supposed to do with them that's made available to the public they can see that on the police department's website um, and we do intend to put all of those on uh, the civilian complaints online available for the public to view, but also guarding uh, some of the sensitive parts of it, i.e. names of complainants, things of that nature, and it will outline the outcome. I think you've seen what we've had so far. We provided that many months ago. So the good news is we, we, we follow up on them. We recently assign an investigator to look into them and uh, I think the short answer is yes, that that then will be available on the, um, to the public in the future. All right, thank you. And then- um, Did I lock? I don't know if he's locked up again. I think so. If you wanna carry on, uh, Councilor Franco. All right. <laughs> okay. So, and then the second consensus was, um, a police and community collaborative group, which would be the um, best next step for the town of Groton. And although it would not provide direct oversight or review, this committee would build stronger relationships between police and the community, increase communication and allow for the police and the community to exchange ideas. The establishment of a collaborative community, I mean, a collaborative committee, including community leaders, the police department, the town government, and the members of the Groton community is a great first step. The collaborative committee can be designated in a way to open communication and make recommendations to the town council's public safety committee. Um, so I believe, um, you know, other communities have done this and um, has started off on a good foot, even locally. So I was just curious as to um, what the chief or what um, the deputy police chief um, think about this recommendation as um, as it's listed here, and do they have any other thoughts that they may have if um, to even enhance it to make it even better than what's written, or if they just want they agree with what's written, or do they have issues with what's written? Uh, I I hope you uh, I hope you can hear me now. I've turned off the, the video, so I think maybe that was slowing me down a little bit. Am I, uh, am I 
just give me a thumbs up if I'm if you guys can hear me. If all right, all right, we can Great. hear you. <laughs> so yeah, I, I I endorse that. I think any any feedback that we can get that help us to do our jobs a little bit better to impact uh, families and the community as a whole in a positive way and. And, and utilize what information they have and advice that they could provide their department is helpful. Um, where I would have some questions, uh, not necessarily concerns, but certainly questions on what that looks like and how that's configured. Um, I, I'm a firm believer that uh, in some cases, less is more. And what I mean by that is to have a, a representative sampling of folks that are permanent members of that. You know, that's not to prevent anybody from coming in and saying, hey, I wanna, I wanna talk about this. But having a, a core group of people that are serve as the board or or the uh, the permanent parties, if you will, that we can turn to, I can turn to as a police chief, get their thoughts on issues um, that are consistent and regular members, um, and and consider what excuse me, what constituencies here in the town are important. I know we interface a lot with the business community um, throughout the town. Uh, the Groton Merchants Association, the Downtown Business, uh, Downtown Mystic Business Association, the Chamber of Commerce, faith-based groups. Um, and one of the big constituents we have in town that we have interaction with pretty regularly is, is representatives of the United States Navy because of the, the large contingent of active duty sailors at the base. So I'd love to see a representative from there. Schools um, and just uh, people in different parts of the town. So I, I would I'm interested in finding out more of that and how that would work and the frequency with which these meetings would happen and, and what the intended goals is, uh, what the intended goals are, excuse me. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to hear that. Um, I know our officers are anxious to hear that too. Uh, and I know that that um, is designed to get the dialogue going and I'm, I'm in favor of that dialogue. Thank you. So and then, um, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, I thought you were done, go ahead. No, I was just gonna go through each one for my questions. If you wanted to jump in on number two, go well, right ahead. Well, I wasn't gonna break the, the dialogue or the document down like that actually. So the intention or thought, I know you're new to the committee tonight. So uh, the thought process originally from our former was to um, kind of start from the beginning because this is our first look at it as a, as a group. Uh, you know, We looked at it individually. We can start there and finish with those two if you want, but I think the historical background and really breaking the text apart kind of to give the respect to the work individually um, and then process through this. Um, but we're, the goal is over several meetings or the original plan was to break this document apart. Um, so we can break it up either way. We can start from the bottom and go to the top, but um, I think it is important to kind of really look at some of the other texts in here as well. But um, I'm, I'm open to, you know, you can finish and we can, Break it apart any way you guys want. All right, thank you. Yeah, go ahead. So I'll move on to number three, which is to research options such as a targeted community policing based on need, paid social workers as regular co-responders available for every shift and funding for more training in defensive tactics and conflict resolution, de-escalation, use of force and implicit bias. Um, I can say from meetings that I've had um, at the police department and follow-up meetings with a smaller group of police officers, I do think these are some of um, the greatly needed things for our community. So, um, and especially the, the physical training um, and being able to fund that type of thing for the police. So um, I have questions for the chief on this one, as well as the town manager on the financial aspects of it. And um, what are your thoughts on this, Chief Fazzaro, on option number three? Yeah, I, I, you know, obviously we wanna shape our effort here in the town to what the town needs and what, you know, the, our elected body, our appointed officials too want to see from their police department. Increased community policing. We've tried to increase our, our footprint throughout the town with community policing and community oriented policing strategies. Um, I know many of you are familiar with Officer McClelland and, and some of the team that we've got working on that. But I, expanding that is certainly something I'm in favor of. I think that that gives a positive face to the department, but it also gets us more directly 
connected with certain segments of the community where, where maybe we're most needed. Um, so I'm in favor of that. And paid social workers, I know that's been something that came out of the Public Act 20-01. Considering that, we did a report. Uh, we forwarded that to the Police Officer Standards and Training Council as was required at the end of the calendar year 2020. That was forwarded up. Um, and we have looked at this and I certainly have discussed it with the town manager and you will see in our proposed budget that is one of those components of it is including a an individual in the police department that is a trained social worker, not a police officer, uh, to to, um, to work on those uh, things that they would be best suited for. Uh, also, as part of that proposal for our budget, we have increased uh, our staffing by one community policing officer. Um, but I, I, I will tell you, I've had this conversation recently with the town manager uh, as we did our budget brief. There, there is some substantial financial impacts for some of these programs. Um, I think they're worth the investment, but I think it's also important to say that there are, are unfunded requirements that we have from recent legislation that we need to fulfill, and it will, there will have a, that will have an impact on our budget as well. So all of these things are great. They're, they're, they're things that I think are needed. Uh, certainly the additional training, um, there are components of the public act that did impact how we train police officers, and because you know that, that that there's a financial cost to that. There's a there's an expense. You know, getting people in to do training, making sure that we still maintain our core patrol areas and our core duties while they're in training, costs money, costs overtime, um, and there's other you know associated expenses. So I think you're, you you will see that there's a, a an increase that results from some of these things. Um, We've already implemented some of the implicit bias training. Uh, Sergeant Sawyer, our training sergeant, along with Captain uh, Kelly Crandall, are putting together a program uh, that they've already vetted through the Police Officer Standards and Training Council to make sure that it's um, more than adequate, but but certified. Um, that is something we're in the midst of doing now. And I think I told uh, this body, as well as the RTM, that we sent officers to training so that they could teach fair and impartial policing. And, and, and that's underway now. Use of force, we've had that going on uh, consistently, certainly since the fall with some use of force training that's required annually. But again, all of this is, there, there's a bit of an expense to it. And in some cases there's a significant expense. So um, I hope I hope that answers that question on, on uh, topic three. Thank you. And Mr. Burt, um, will we be seeing um, I mean, I, I would think, as the chief had just said, we're going to see some of these in our budget. And do you have any thoughts on any of that? I think you covered it very well. But just one thing about the social worker, I see this as sort of a pilot to maybe expanding it a little further as we get down the road. But I think we have to take steps towards where we want to be. OK, so when it comes to social workers, in other communities, if anybody would know, um, or from from what I gather, you can get a social worker to respond to calls mostly during the day, um, but it's very difficult to find them in the evening to show up after just say, I believe 10, 11 o'clock at night. Um, so is that where we would be targeting a social worker or should be targeting a social worker in the, the third shift, second, third shift? I, I think it's hard to say because a lot of these things, there's no there's no rhyme or reason at uh, what time certain things happen and having them follow up on maybe incidents where police did investigate where a social worker would benefit that entire situation. For instance, a domestic violence situation or a place where we've, we've found children that maybe have um, been neglected where they can interface with the families or maybe it didn't even rise to a criminal element where we can, we can put them in contact with a social worker that's available on maybe on an on-call basis or a consultant basis when they're not there. Um, but frankly, we're, we're not really sure how that's going to look. That's a new concept. It's not something that uh, we've done before, and, it, and it's not that prevalent in the communities here in, in Connecticut, or at least in Eastern Connecticut that I'm familiar with. But where I do see it happening and having a significant impact is, are things that we've dealt with in recent weeks. You know, with Old Snap, uh, our department will continue go out and check on people where we can for the homeless to make sure that people have adequate shelter when when our means allow. And what I mean by that is if our officers are decisively engaged in investigating uh, crimes or traffic accidents or other duties, 
you know, we, we may not have the flexibility to send someone out to check on the homeless or to provide shelter. And, and quite frankly, that the message that we heard from the legislature and others is to try and get police out of homeless issues, try and get police out of uh, mental illness issues. We're never going to get fully out of that stuff. Those are things where we don't know when they're going to happen. It's hard to say, okay, we're going to put a social worker on this shift on these days of the week because inevitably things will happen anytime, anywhere. But our officers are poised to, to handle that, but this will give them hopefully a, a, another mechanism or another avenue of someone to use and maybe channel some of those things away from our officers who, who, who may have a great approach to handling it in the short term, but don't have the tools to handle it in the long term, like someone who's a social worker, that whether they have that ability themselves, has access to other avenues to provide assistance to those people. So, as, as the town manager said, it's a pilot program. I think it will help, uh, it will help our officers, it will help the community, but how it works, it's going to have to be fleshed out as time goes on, and we're going to have to experience successes and failures. Um, again, we, we haven't done this before. There's not really a script to follow. Um, is there a benefit? Sure, there is. Are there things that we would like them to handle rather than police? Sure. But at the end of the day, we, we're, our officers are on duty 24-7. They're very skilled. They do have a lot of training. Um, if there's an issue, an acute issue that they can handle short term, hopefully uh, at, a, at a level less than... Um, so less than making an arrest for some of the issues I identified before, we'll do that. But but uh, but some of these some of these things, quite frankly, we've been told loud and clear: police, you know, police in Connecticut, police in the United States. We want these handled mm -hmm. by other entities, and, um, and this is maybe that first first step in that direction for some things. Right. Yeah. The, I did also hear some things about um, with the state's new changes that. It's going to be difficult for police to even give a civilian a ride in their police car. Um, Dr. Franco. So maybe with social workers, there'll be some kind of other issues. But thank you so much for following up on those three, and I'll yield the floor. No, I was saying if you, um, I was going to um, turn it over to Councilor Bordelon. If you have any other uh, uh, questions, we'll, we'll uh, definitely circle back around as well. Yep, no. Um, yield on the floor. <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll do another round robin. Uh, 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 Borderline? Yeah, no, I think those are great, great point, place to start. I mean, that's the end of the recommendations, but I think the bulk of the, where, how we got to where we are is important. Um, I, I, I think looking at this, I mean, I naturally go right to section three. Um, looking at, I think that's an important start. Um, I, with my, even in my own field of work, we always go, where are we at? And where are we currently at? And where are we trying to go? So if we we're trying to improve customer service or look at uh, things that we're going to improve, let it be um, patient care, or maybe a new implementation of a, of a drug or a procedure or implementation of any type of protocol, I think it's important to, to start with where, where are we currently at? And I think section three, it says current model of oversight in our town. For me, I think that's a good place to start. I don't know if you guys want to start there. I mean, this is going to take many weeks to go through, but... Um, just kind of really visiting where, where, what we currently have. Um, and, and looking at this, you know, the current model of what we currently have, um, I think the things that were discussed in the findings at the end in the last three questions and how we would implement um, social workers and things like that are great caveats to it. Um, it, it is important, um, you know, to, to realize um, working from the medical field and, and having a mother who works as a social worker in a different state you know, cops get burnt out too. And, and no one is perfect in any field. Um, no matter if you were a, a badge in a, in a correction facility, a cop to um, a doctor, I mean, there's malpractice. And so it is important to know, I think that social worker model or that piece could be used to not only just to identify as was just discussed tonight, um, used towards a, the victims or, or, the, or the children that were on site at the time of an arrest. But also if a cop is having a tough time with, let's say, um, a hostage situation or um, some other type of arrest that kind of, um, the types of things that cops do, as, you, as, as everybody knows, you know, in any field, um, you don't walk away without any trauma from that. And so I think it's important to realize that, you know, the officers in our own community or any community 
could also benefit to having um, these types of services offered to them um, in-house, maybe a de debrief um, after a 12 hour shift or overtime where you might've been in a hostage situation, but then you just pulled you know, someone over for a DWI and you're kind of everywhere in your hands or in everything. And so I think it's important that you know, there is that capability to have something on site for an officer after you know, a very tough situation. Um, you know, let it be, you know, rescuing a, a girl from one of the hotels who's part of a sex trafficking ring that you just are blown away by. And then you have to come back to the office, you know, and in between the next call. Um, so I guess I wanted to ask Chief Rosaro, have you thought about that perspective from that angle of that, that finding that was just discussed in the end of also the need to enhance what we already have um, for the benefit of the officer's mental and emotional well-being? Sure. Uh, there's there's uh, certainly an additional benefit from um, from that standpoint. You, you'd be happy to know, though, we do have mechanisms in place already that help with that. Anything above and beyond that certainly is welcome. Getting back to the Public Act 20-01 requires that our officers get a mental health screening once at least once every five years. Uh, yours truly will be up for that first in our department um, right. in the coming weeks. Yep. Um and just because I think it's important and I think I need to set the example. Secondly, you know, you mentioned debriefings. Uh, two days ago, our officers had a debriefing on a critical incident. They went to a very unfortunate incident. But we do that. We're fortunate in, in uh, that we do have a peer support group, um, a very capable person who runs that. I, I mentioned her name earlier, which is uh, Officer McClellan. She, she coordinates with other resources. We had a group come in to do a debrief. Um, we, uh, we had McDonald and now we've got Chase and that's the whole reason for that is officer wellness and making sure our officers are, are fit, body, mind, and spirit, making sure that they're good servants to the community, but we're taking care of them, uh, both, uh, uh, personally and professionally, make sure that, you know, they, we get them from, from the cradle as a new officer, a recruit through retirement and that they're, they're healthy and, uh, during the time in between they're good servants of the community and good stewards of, uh, of, uh, the town of Groton. So yeah, but but to add to that, yes, I, I is, could that person have that? Sure, and we're putting a lot of things on a social worker's plate. But like I said before, we haven't had it before. Um, I'm sure that we're going to mm -hmm. to live and learn, if you will, as this process moves along. If we, if and when we get somebody on board, and and certainly that would be something we would uh, we would take advantage of. Well, sometimes it's nice to have something like, as we all know, like in the medical field, I'm in. You know, when, even when I was sick, it's hard to be the person that's sick. So it's hard to take the lead because you know too much of what's going on. And sometimes I think internally from some of the reports I was reading out West, it's also important to realize that the people that you're identifying that are running these are also cops as officers as well. And so therefore, sometimes people need someone who's kind of not involved in that arena at all to have open, to open up that floor. You know, even as a parent, yeah. it's hard to be the teacher as we're learning as a, as, as a homeschool. I'm not a teacher. I didn't go to school for that, nor did, you know, I, I respect what they do but I invested in the taxpayers for my kids to go off to school to learn because I didn't want to homeschool, you know? Um, and so it's nice sometimes to have somebody else that's not part of that um, sure. body that doesn't wear the same badge of the community that they're serving. That's kind of um, a caveat, you know, to helping the, the, the officer, but they have no relationship to the badge or, you know, they're, they're just a, they're set back from it. Um, sure. So, and, and we have we we also take advantage. We have chaplains that that work with our officers. Sure. We've we've really benefited from that work yeah. as well. But to your point, it, you know, officers yeah. do experience a lot of bad things. We had an officer yeah. that unfortunately had to go to four different death scenes last week. You know that right. that has its impact. Your point, so um, it's well taken. And it's and it's similar to the medical field. You know, with the frontline workers dealing with the COVID victims. You know, we're, we're finding that they are needing more support, and and that is okay to acknowledge. Um, and with that also too, you know, it's, I was seeing out West also some police departments were looking at, you know, they do the lie detector test to check um, when a new officer is coming in. And one of the things in the, one of the meetings that was brought up is to look at racial, religious and ethical biases that are um, also asked, um, you know, where do people stand that are coming in? Um, I'm making those um, points of, of question and realizing that everybody comes with their own pre-diagnosed ideas on religious and ethical thoughts or processes. And some were saying, should there be more screening with that? So again, looking, looking at our model, our current structure, 
I guess it asked the town manager, when is the last time something has come looking at this model in section three, which I'm assuming everyone has in front of them. Um, it says it would go to the town manager and then uh, Councilor RTM. When's the last time that we ha had to use that structure? I do not have that in front of me. Can you, can you give me a little more detail? Oh, no, I thought, because the, the, the focus of the meeting tonight was to review the report. So I, I apologize. I thought everyone had it in front of them. Um, section three, the current model, it states, um, what page did, what, uh, um, it's under section three. It says current model of oversight. Let me, let me, let me pull up digital. I can get digital. You can, you can come back from it, from it. Yeah. Yeah, sure. No problem. Um, I guess what I'm asking is, is like looking at our current structure, right. um, I've been involved in politics. I've never had anything come before since I've been on, um, and, you know, looking at that, you know, one can say that this is no strike that our town has anything wrong or anything has happened, but this structure of, of what we have does leave a door open, so to speak. Um, and as I stated in many meetings, you know, we have a town manager and we have a police chief, but again, it doesn't mean that these two people will be involved in however many years. And so it's, I think it is important <laughs> that there is some form of oversight. So just looking at this current model, I'm just curious as to how often we've, you know, basically use this model as it's as, as it's written. Yeah, we use it personally, um, mm -hmm. fairly often. Um, from where I'm gleaning, I still don't have the copy up, but uh, I'm familiar with our general model and, and anything, but you know, if there's something, you know, I don't get involved in small things, but anything that's at all important, I, you know, I review and a lot of times the attorney's reviewing and um, to make sure we're doing things the right way. But uh, it was pretty common. So how many complaint processes would you say that you actually handle um, in a year? We don't, get, we don't get a whole lot of complaints generally in the police department. You've seen that list before during the court meetings. Uh, we don't get a whole lot. Um, a lot of them are very, very minor. Um, I'm probably, LJ, what would you say, how many a year would you say, LJ? I'm, I'm thinking I'm probably involved in a few, three or four a year. I think we had uh, in the neighborhood of about 15 to 20 last year, if that, and, and please don't quote me. I didn't, I, I'm, I'm at my house. So I don't have direct access to that. I apologize, but you know, I, I, the town manager and I talk virtually on a daily basis. If anything comes up of no, he's, he's informed of it. Yeah. Um, and he does, uh, I appreciate his trust and, and um, uh, patience in us dealing with those issues. And and, and I'll tell you how the, the conversation always ends. Mm -hmm. Let me know what happens with that. Yeah. And that's what we do. I let him know what happens with that from small issues to big issues. If it's something that our supervisory staff handles uh, and it, it follows our complaint policy and the stuff that we have written that's available online and the process that we're, we're bound by, uh, post policy and state law to, to follow, we do that. If it's something that goes beyond um, goes beyond our uh, um, typical minor um, minor complaint that isn't resolved at the first level, then, then we may ask for a, a legal consultation. Um, generally, a, I, I think I've explained this before, if it is something that could have a criminal component, the state's attorney's office has consulted on it, and, and that would remain the same regardless of this. And quite frankly, if it's a criminal component, it would not go to a civilian oversight board until that, that criminal complaint is investigated, um, regardless of the process, because that's just that's the way criminal complaints are handled. Um, so all of those, you know, all those mechanisms are in place. I, I would submit to you, they're used, it's used pretty regularly. The town manager is engaged. He wants to know uh, what, what this department is doing. And I try to make sure that I satisfy that requirement on a regular basis. Um, and, and just for clarification, we had 16 uh, complaints in 2020. Great, thank you. And, uh, so I guess with that piece, I looking at, and once again, I apologize because I'm going to refer to this because the main, the main focus of the meeting was to refer to the document tonight. So um, if my questions are going to pertain to the document, so. Um, I do have it up now. Okay, it up great. It, it is, I will say, I was trying to flip through it too. Sometimes it's good for a reference on the page number because there's several, if you're looking at subsection three, section three, there's multiple ones throughout the- Yeah. Well, now that everyone has it, that would be helpful. Perfect. Thank for, you. For, for uh, the purposes of the public, uh, we are referencing um, page four of 
the Cork Report titled, uh, it's section three, current model of oversight in town of, uh, town of Groton. Uh, so this um, section explains, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, chief manager and fellow um, you know, committee members, um, and, and obviously the, the author of this report, um, Chair Thomas, uh, this goes over the current model of, of uh, oversight with respect to uh, civilian uh, complaints. Is that correct? That's what I'm saying. It is. Uh, yes. So, and, and, and for, uh, you know, just point of clarification too, there have been cases where uh, we've investigated a complaint or a complaint has come forward. In fact, I can think of one in particular where um, individuals went right to the town council to speak during public comments. Um, uh, the mayor was engaged on that particular complaint, uh, as well as the town manager. So it does happen. Um, after all, I, it, you know, we, we, we know the system. I report to the town manager, the, the town manager reports to the council. Uh, it, it, you know, depending on the gravity of it, uh, that it could be something well within the purview of, of people outside the department. So even something like just looking at this and we look at the three recommendations and once again, the RTM things are just recommendations. There's no decision obviously of what is gonna be done or if done, not done, what section, if it will be any of those three sections combination or where it would ever go beyond this committee to the town council. So this is just research. I know it's important. I know one of the other nights or the one recommendations I'll be bringing up is looking at the new London model that's gonna be coming on board and just piecing apart theirs as well. Um, but with that, um, even this section in areas and ways that improvement can occur without a huge drastic change, I guess once again, that section is open up to interpretation. What things then should be even more wording to clarify what things should come before an RTM or town council at what point? And, and I think that would, I think, allow for a lot more transparency and dialect to open up. Um, for example, you know, once again, I'll reference my own job, you know, all confidential information, but there's some things that there's a defined line that, you know, if something gets to be on a certain point, there's a level that has to be taken. This doesn't really give a lot of when that's going to happen. Um, and are we talking just to the, the mayor? The mayor is an appointed position. Um, but the nine council body as a whole should be in the loop on any of those decisions because we're all equally elected and we appoint our mayor. That's our structure of government. I know New London structure is much different. So simple things that could enhance, um, you know, some of just how we operate. And these are the areas over time that could be looked at um, is how do we you know, take what's there and maybe fine tune it and make it just a little bit more clear so that people feel that there is some transparency. Um, because as of right now, as a town councilor, I have nothing that's been brought to me or written to me that states at what level something then would come to us. Um, and, and, and that would even help. Um, I think it is important too to have, um, there's a form of boundary and etiquette that should happen. Um, my direct boss that I report to has a great relationship. So sometimes, you know, it's, it's good to have an oversight committee of sorts or some type of other, other group that helps to be part of the process that has <clears throat> some type of background um, because it, it's important to make sure everyone has a checks and balance and, and, and any type of work. Let it be law enforcement, <clears throat> lawyers, doctors, medical field. Um, and so my thought or vision on this too, when we look at those recommendations is having, I can think of people in our community um, that, that are retired or actively working in law enforcement or corrections, those types of folks might be appropriate to also be a part of this um, down the road as, you know, to bring in their opinions on situations as well um, and having a diverse background of, of, of individuals. Um, so I think that that's, um, really important, but I, I think we really should look um, at the current oversight um, and how that citizen's complaint is handled and what is our process in Groton um, and, you know, take some notes in that section to, to see when we look at what we want to present as a final report um, to um, move forward that we kind of look at it. Um, you know, yeah. I think um, uh, Manager Burt wanted to sure. answer. Yeah, uh, go ahead. 
John. I just want to remind, we don't, uh, Chief Pissarro and I are not sure, there's actually not a town council role in the process. If you look back at the attorney opinions, the council can't get involved in any of the, you know, I can show you things, but you can't ask the, you, you can't direct any policies, you can't direct any requesting, but all you can do is ask for something at the end. Um, I feel like we're heading in the direction of real getting into my oversight. If you want to get to that point or change away where the town council has oversight, it will take a charter change. So I don't know where we're going. I expected this to be really focused on the recommendations from the cork. I got to tell you, going into the uh, budget season, I'm not going to be able to participate much. So I don't know where we're going with this, but well, uh, I think we really need a discussion of how we're going to approach this before we get into the meat and potatoes. I've got about a half hour till I have to be done, and we haven't really done anything yet. That's okay. I mean, we'll 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 make more meetings. I mean, yeah. I think we're in our like right said, interview yeah. to talk about all the options on here and what yeah. we currently stand. So that's so I feel that we're we're looking at the document and talking yeah. about it. But if you feel uncomfortable with that, that's another discussion. But yeah. um, I just want to make sure harder. we follow the just make sure we follow the attorney's opinions that we don't get into things that are against those opinions. We were heading in that nobody's, direction. Nobody's in that direction. Yeah, um, that was going. Yeah, the town council does not have oversight over the police department. I don't know why that made it into that report either. That's not how it works. No, but uh, uh, they report because we are the nine counselors oversee your job and you yeah. oversee all of the people yeah, in the community. Yeah, you can't give any direction to the police department though. Correct, but we can direct to like you. You can't even even create a council and require the police to be involved without going through me. Right, but what I'm asking is, is that's where the, the gray area is. And in the report and on the video that I watched that when they came out and spoke, the council can give direction to the town manager. But not to give anything, do anything in particular with a particular staff person. That's what I'm saying. But if we could decide if we wanted to make a change or vote a change, we could, it wouldn't have required a charter change, in my understanding. That's the video I watched, or maybe I'm wrong. Depends on what you want to do. Right, that's what I'm saying. Correct. Right. 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 Okay. You can't, what you can't do is uh, require, you can't get involved in police policy. You can't require the police to come to the council. No, no, so you'll have no. to talk to me closely. No, that's very adamant. Um, that's, yeah. That's, when, I didn't so, say that we, we would go talk yeah. to the police. Um, no, that or to require them to include the council too. I just want to make sure. Yeah, we heard you. Yeah. Okay. We heard you. Thank you. I'm still talking within my preview. My, I, I was just simply saying the way that the video was when they came out, it said that certain things that the council could direct the town manager. And that's what I had stated. Is that right, John, or no? You're saying that's wrong. There are certain things, but there's a whole lot that yeah. can't right. be. So there are can't, and, and and you can't dictate any police policies at all. Even yeah. I can't do that. Yeah. Yeah, I or understand. Processes. That comes yeah. from the state. I understand. Okay, that's fine. Um, but there are some things. So what are those things then, John? Should we have the attorney come to add those to this um, so we can discuss? The way it works on that kind of thing is, I, I would refresh yourself with the written opinions, and then when you have other things, we can get further written opinions. Yeah, I have the written opinions, yeah, and yeah. we've read those, so maybe we should discuss. We'll discuss those another night to see exactly what those are, because I think it's important to you know know like what you're describing. Um, but again, I don't know if any other councilors have any thoughts on that section on section three. I think that is, you know, important to see where we're currently at and how do we you know how does that fit in our surrounding areas and things that um it, this one's a very vague um and, it, and some of the things from the attorney's opinion page um which we can show at the next uh, meeting or another meeting is there are there is some room to to edit certain sections to not do the things that John is describing, but within the, pre, you know, the, the areas that can be. So um, I personally think the current structure of the way it's set up, once again, it's no, nothing saying that the town manager or our police department has any action or reasons to be doing anything outside, but it, this is the section that really is vague, in my opinion. It's a very vague uh, section um, and it, it's a, are you referring to section three? Yeah, three. What um, we currently have in place, it just seems very 
open-ended, vague. No one, I mean, we have to have the attorney's opinion. There's some things we can do, some structures that, you know, I, I think those need to be really defined and really picked apart um, as well. Because I think it's important before we look at a document as well is to know what we really have and how is that, you know, formed. And what are those things that can be changed without a charter change? And what are those things that um, don't need one? that in the area and what actions can a council do um, and what things so that, you know, like as John stated, he doesn't want to go into the weeds with that. So I think it'd be important to have those documents hand in hand with the charter and have I, it looked at. I think one of the two opinions actually talked more about the process that's required. And then I think the cork went through a lot of this. What I don't want to do is reproduce what the cork already did because um, mm -hmm. going to the budget season, like I said, I won't be participating for a couple of months in okay. the middle of that. So if you know and and i and lj won't be participating without my participation so okay if we wanted yeah all right well, i mean we still are in our preview to have meetings correct i mean are you saying we can't have meetings or no you can it just oh. it won't necessarily have our involvement oh that's okay oh you know i understand that i guess I, jump in. Portal on. I just want to end my sentence um i just want to say that this area you know has a lot of uh ambiguity uh, it just it's very open-ended that's all thank you Go ahead, Rachel. Councillor Franco. Thank you, Councillor uh, Councillor Franco. Thank you. I am. Um, I look at Section Three, and I think it just is a very clearly defined process of if somebody is going to make a complaint. This is by the court committee. It is not a town document. Um, they basically state that a citizen files a complaint with the supervisor. The supervisor forwards it to the deputy chief. Um, what happens if there's a conflict of interest? Section four is um, deputy chief um, verifies findings, investigates it further. Um, once department investigation is concluded, it's filed with the town manager's office. And then section five, I think is the, the part where you may be discussing is if a citizen chooses to co um, contest the findings, their primary recourse would be to appeal to the town manager's office, town council or elected representatives on the RTM who would likely refer their matter to the town council or the town manager. The other recourse available is a citizen could hire a private attorney and pursue civil actions. I mean, um, another course is to file a commission on human rights and opportunities complaint with the state of Connecticut. I think it's clearly spelled out pretty, pretty well here in a very short, summarized, precise um, bullet points. Um, I have watched the core committees. I, I, I think everybody on this Zoom meeting right here and has watched all of those. Um, I'm not exactly sure why we're gonna go through the whole report line by line almost again, because we're all, we all basically saw what happened at those meetings. If there were questions that weren't answered there, I can understand discussing it, but these things have already been discussed and the attorneys have given all their opinions and clearly clarified the council does not oversee the police like that. Um, my interpretation is if the chief of police in Groton does not handle matters properly, the town manager handles that. And if the town manager doesn't handle things properly, the town council holds him accountable. That's how I see it. Um, it's not to direct the town manager on how to operate the police department or the chief that I don't think that is our role. And I thought I, the way I listened to it, um, that's how what I took from it. Um, and I also, I mean, I've been told we're going through the whole report and this is gonna take weeks on end. I wasn't under that impression. I didn't hear the chairman of this committee say this is what was gonna happen. I thought we were going to discuss the consensus. Um, and I, I thought that because that was what was discussed at the town council meeting is that the con it was going to be discussed of the consensus. And personally, that's where I think we should pick up and focus on what the consensus is. There is a lot in this document. I do not think we should go through each individual person's recommendations because everybody has their own opinion, but this is what they came to as a group, their consensus, which then went to the RTM RTM voted unanimously to send that consensus to us. 
So they agreed with the consensus. So that's where I would, I personally would like to focus on myself. Uh, to pick off on uh, Councilor Franco's point, uh, that is my uh, personal focus is on the consensus recommendations. However, um, I uh, believe that um, as a committee, you know, we ought to be talking about uh, the com the um, report as a whole. Uh, obviously, there is a lot of ground to cover. Um, so I think there is merit to discussing the entire report should any uh, counselor have questions about the report or would like to uh, discuss that report um, just for the purposes of transparency. Uh, and, um, you know, um, 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 so um, Chair Thomas, I apologize. You've been on deck since uh, at least 7.50. Uh, and uh, I've not recognized you to speak yet. So, uh, Chairman Th uh, Chair Thomas. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Bumgarner. Um, yeah, I, I don't have a lot to add here. I just wanted to uh, note that section four is where the categorical models that we distilled, uh, we relate those to the town of Groton and our best estimation of what would have to happen for any of those particular categorical models to be applied in Groton. So if there's gonna be some theoretical discussion about how um, oversight could be implemented in, a, in any different way to Groton, that could be a, a, a section you wanna look at to uh, launch off the, the, the conversation. That's all, thank you. And um, just into um, Councillor Franco's point regarding the article, Council my understanding was we, you know, they were tasked with this. This is something that we we could take all the recommendations and combine them. We can pick it apart, but there is a lot of other things in the 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 um, report that you know it's important to look at the whole document as a whole and look at what avenue. It's not just the findings because we could choose that we don't want to use any of these or one of these and add our own different thing. So the report is another baseline to achieve that. Um, Cause at the end it is the council's decision. And this is just the hard work that they did for us to give us a report to, to work from. Um, but where our report goes depends, it doesn't have to be set to this guideline per se. It, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a building block. So that's what I, my understanding. So I apologize if um, you didn't think we were gonna talk about the article. I, I thought we were looking at the article as a whole and the findings at the end as well. So thank you. So uh, just, uh, two points. One, um, want to be conscious of the time. Uh, we've had um, just our town staff now um, going, it's almost 8.30, uh, and do want to be respectful of everyone's um, personal time and schedule as well, uh, given this is a late meeting. Uh, this is, again, um, we don't have to make any decision tonight. Um, so if we don't you know, finish discussion, that's OK. We can do it another night. Um, uh, secondly, um, Councilor Franco uh, made an uh, you know, uh, in her line of questioning with the chief, um, you know, um, uh, it, it came up of, you know, doing uh, new things, right, and piloting new projects in the case of, uh, you know, the mental health screenings. Uh, and I'd just like to remind the chief that uh, once upon a time, he made the same statement uh, with respect to body cameras. Uh, and it was not the popular thing to do to equip uh, police officers with body cameras. And we were one of the first uh, police departments here in Eastern Connecticut to deploy uh, body cameras. And um, uh, the chief understood at that time that was uh, an important, um, you know, important tool for officers um, to uh, not just improve community relations, but also uh, hold uh, themselves accountable. Uh, and um, he understood that. And I think uh, the, the department has benefited from that uh, for years already, uh, when now uh, it's the popular thing to do. Um, so uh, just want to, again, uh, recognize that um, because I think it is important to give credit where, where credit's due. Um, and um, uh, with that, uh, does any counselors have uh, any final uh, thoughts or questions? Um, I would like to uh, wrap things up. I, again, want to be conscious of time. Yeah, uh, I just had one. I had one thought. I was talking with Officer Nolan, um, who's a New London cop, who's for Civilian Review Board and Oversight. And there were other officers in different, um, from state troopers to other police officers in other areas, different states that are also, and uh, uh, um, Officer Nolan is very open and willing to speak. And I think he'd be important to invite as well. Um, so at one point, I think I will invite him. But I wanted to ask Chief Rosaro, is the whole Groton Town Police Department 
not wanting any form of res review board because I know at a lot of the meetings and the videos I've watched, it, it was stated many times that um, you know that they weren't as welcoming to that, and and um, I just you know didn't know if there was any of any rotten police that that were open to some form of of any sort. Yeah, I, I can't speak for every officer, but much like you just pointed out, Officer Nolan in London yep. um, may have a significantly different opinion than a different police yep. officer who happens to be an elected representative in a different community. That's the beauty of America, right? We all have different opinions. Right. Is that the consensus of everyone uh, in law enforcement? I don't know. I don't I don't know that it is. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would hope that you put faith and confidence in, in your leadership team here in Groton as to what, what works in this community. What works here in Groton may not work in London and vice versa. Yeah. Um, you know, um, I, I, wanna, I wanna be a productive and collaborative member of, of our community and make sure that we do policing the way it should be done. Um, I, I just want guidance and direction that is, um, yeah. that's easily understandable. It, it, isn't, it, isn't, um, it isn't something that's kind of directed in a whole bunch of different ways. It's something that, that our officers can embrace. I, I can't give you an answer on what every officer thinks. I, mm -hmm. I think that we, you know, I, I, I think we have a pretty good system as it is. Mm -hmm. There's always room for improvement. Uh, but I, I've looked at the, the recommendations from the court committee. And I said from the, outs, the outset of this conversation tonight, you know, I, I understand them. I, I, I think they're rational. They're, they, you know, I, I've read the, uh, the consensus and I've read the other opinions of the individual members. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm not really sure what I'm not really sure where to where to go with that, quite frankly. All right, thank you. No, I was just referring to your comment where, you know, at one point there was meetings and offered to go up and talk, and every all the officers, you know, were not happy with you know the direction, and so I was just wondering if there was any outliers in our department. I just think it is important too. I think at some point too, inviting in members to speak that are that serve as officers that um, are are for. And, and having that on the record as well. So it would be, um, I mean, yeah, I, think, I, I think it'd be great. Sure. I, I, again, I, I, I'm not gonna speak for every officer. I, I, I think I have my thumb on the pulse of what our officers think. They wanna be supportive of the community. They wanna serve the community well um, and wanna have a collaborative engagement. Um, but, but you know, you've mentioned transparency several times. Um, I don't think we could be more transparent in the process and, and how we're doing it and, um, you know, I'm, I'm proud of the work of our officers and the supervisors that are called to, called to, to, to intervene or to uh, look into things when a complaint does come. And I, and I will submit this to you that if many times a complaint will come, it may not have, it may not reach the conclusion that the complainant wants. That, that happens. It's just like when we give a traffic ticket, you know, an individual out there may not think they deserve the traffic ticket. And that's, there's an avenue of recourse. They go to the court, they, they have it adjudicated. You know, that does happen. Um, so the process is, is not prescribed by the, the town of Groton or the, the, the town of Groton police department. It's by, it's by policy that we have to adopt. It's, it's, um, you know, it's, it's a requirement. It's not an option, but also making sure that you are elected officials, as well as the citizens know what that process is and what the outcomes are for those. And that's important to me, providing that providing that information is something that we, uh, you know, we're committed to doing. And I think that's one of those things that Councillor Franco hit on before, you know, the, the recommendations, the consensus, what are we willing to do? And I understand, you know, we're, we're willing to do what the town requires and what, what, um, what my boss says, hey, this is what, what's come down from the council. This is what you have to do. I think that that consensus is a good place to start. And um, I, I've, I've read the reports. I've listened to the court committee. I know that members of this committee have participated in that as well. Um, I'd like to get to work. I'd like to. I'd like to get to the business of of um, of doing what we think uh, collectively is a is a uh, is a good strategy for the town of Groton. Great, thank you, uh, Councillor Franco. And then um, I have a uh, one final question for uh, uh, Deputy Chief Gately. If um, is his uh, audio work? Are you on a uh, Deputy Chief? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Then yes, I guess sir. I'm up. All right. Um, uh, Councilor Franco, do, uh, do you? No, go ahead. You ask first. All right. Um, uh, just a qu brief question, uh, Chief Gately, and thank you so much for uh, joining us this evening. Um, just uh, reading th through the report, um, I actually, let me pull it back up. I'm sorry. Um, so uh, on page five, 
uh, in Section 3, uh, you know, the current model of uh, oversight in town of Groton. It states that uh, under number 2A, if there is any possible conflict of interest uh, as determined by the deputy chief, then the case would be assigned to someone else. Um, and I asked that question because that's something that came uh, sort of came up um, throughout the summer um, um, at, at the national level um, with, um, you know, whether it was in the case of um, uh, Brianna Taylor, for example, you know, um, I, or, or um, some of the other uh, situations that, um, you know, result in, in a um, in a death, um, when they um, began scrutinizing the process uh, for which you know um, the civilian complaints or um, were uh, issued, uh, there was a, a question as to um, you know who uh, determined and what criteria was met um, for um, uh, for the review of um, civilian complaints. Um, so. Uh, case in point, you know, how, how uh, do you arrive at the conclusion that someone uh, may or may not have a conflict of interest? I, I hope that makes sense, sir. Yes, that does make sense. I mean, what we'd be looking at is ensuring that one of our supervisors, if they're going to look into a matter that there's no relationship to the complainant, there's no uh, friendship that would unfairly sway their ability to look at that thing independently. And that's what we'd be looking at. And um, one of the things that I just, I just went through a, a recent course, um, internal affairs course, and that's one of the things that I'm gonna be implementing. It. When I do assign it, I typically will give an actual memorandum to the supervisor to assign the um, particular investigation. And that's gonna be one of those, almost a questionnaire, if you will. Do you, are you familiar with this person? Do you have any relationship with this person that would conflict with your ability to independently um, investigate this matter? If that oh, answers your question. Absolutely, 110%, um, I would say. So um, no, thank you so much, Deputy Chief. Councilor Bumgarner, could I, could I add something to that? Yes, sir. Just for clarification, you brought up some high profile cases and, and, and how that's handled. I, I just wanna be real clear. You know, were there something with a significant use of force that, frankly, that would be out of our hands as well. There is state statute dictating how um, you know, deadly force uh, is, is investigated as part of the recent police accountability bill. There's also the establishment of uh, a, a new branch of the um, uh, state's attorney's office, which is the Office of Inspector General. So those would be outside of our purview completely until um, the case has uh, gone through the process, through the state's attorney's office, through the independent review of that. So, so the, the, the case that you alluded to is much different, and there is a, there is a prescribed process. I, I know both Deputy Chief Gately and myself have been um, under the old system, right, that, that existed prior to um, the passage of this bill. In our prior careers, we both were involved and officer involved shooting investigations where we were investigators charged with working with the state's attorney, providing a report, and then ultimately the state's attorney makes a call. That, that has changed a little bit, but in Connecticut, that's very strictly prescribed and it's outside. And, you know, we will cooperate. We will provide whatever assistance we're required to, but, but whether it happens in Groton, Hartford, Waterbury, New Haven, Bridgeport, there is a scripted set way that is handled and it's outside of the department almost entirely. So, uh, you know, I just want to draw that. I know you were asking about the conflict of interest. Connecticut general statutes dictate how that is handled to avoid that very issue. I hope that, I hope that helps a, a little bit to clarify the more, the more large scale and, and, and certainly high profile incidents. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Chief. Uh, uh, Councilor Franco. Yes, my internet had a problem and I got booted for a moment a little while ago. So, and I missed what you were saying, Chairman. So, um, I, I had heard Councillor Bordelon say that we can take the consensus and then pick and choose whatever we want. But as you have also said, I mean, this was a consensus of people from all of our, all over our town and even the city. This is a representation of what they came up with and was passed by the RTM. And um, I would be in favor of us going forward with the council with the consensus as it's written with the three bullet points that are there. And um, 
to go through this document numerous times, like to go over it again, I mean, we've all read it. It's available to the public. It's, um, it's something that the RTM has gone over, even with your joint meetings. And I don't know what we would have to gain to go through it all over again. And that's, I just don't understand the point of that. And I think we should be focused basically right on the consensus recommendations and seeing where we may want to go from those three items. And um, because, it, I mean, you, you asked for, you know, you, you decided to go with a, a joint meeting with a cork. And now that we have it, I, I don't think we should pick it apart and start choosing because other people said other things. I understand um, the role of um, our, this committee, but I, I just don't, I personally think the consensus as is should be the one under the discussion and we should move from there. And that's my personal opinion. And that's where I stand, thank you. I can respect that. Um, but what I will say is the town council has an obligation to review the document in its entirety, not just the consensus. And let's not forget that the town council originally tried to have one and it was the moderator who appointed and people really didn't want that to happen. So this document was created. And then when it was created, there were people that were opposed to it or weren't really wanting it to happen. But thankfully, they, they collaborated and it did happen. So I feel like this is a document that they created, but as a town council, we also have to look through it and, and process through this versus just taking the three actions. It's really important to look um, at different sections and um, go through it. So I, I can respect that, Councillor Franco. Um, as a member who's been on here for um, since the start of this, um, we have to draft our own document as well as a result of like these findings and figure out what we want to do to move forward as well, which could be all three of those or one of those, or we might say we don't want to do anything at this time. I mean, no option has been determined. So um, I just am, you know, it's important that we take what they have done um, and, and look through it and um, look for some guidance and direction in it and really make sure we're understanding the language and looking at all the things and the avenues with it. So that's, that's my thought process, but I respect your thought process as well. Thank you. Uh, th thank you, Councillor Bordelon and Councillor uh, Franco. You know, I, I'm just hearing you both. I, I think there is a third way. Um, you know, we, I think there is, there's tremendous merit to scrutinizing the entire um, report uh, and going through, um, you know, each section um, based on kind of what each uh, counselor um, uh, is asking. Uh, and I think that is fair. Um, and I've had this uh, the discussion with both Councilor Frango and Bordelon. Um, I'm very comfortable moving forward with the consensus recommendations. Again, it, it is not um, indicative of my thoughts or, or my endorsement only of the consensus recommendations. Uh, you better believe there are uh, recommendations made by uh, individual uh, committee members uh, that I personally support. Uh, and I think uh, in the long term uh, that you know, the town um, ought to consider, uh, especially as um, you know, policing evolves uh, in the years to come. Uh, however, um, you know, where there is common ground and a desire to move forward with, um, you know, with um, uh, certain policy recommendations, um, we ought to um, do that uh, and take advantage of this moment of uh, com that common ground and consensus. Um, and um, again, this is a working document. The Public Safety Committee will, will not cease to exist after we vote on these recommendations. We can continue this dialogue uh, for, for, you know, the months and years to come. Um, but I, I would like to, um, uh, especially at the next meeting, um, I would like to look at the consensus recommendations and start uh, actually uh, putting together a draft motion or um, you know, uh, language uh, in person, not behind closed doors, um, right? So that uh, the public has the uh, opportunity to see uh, that work happening before their eyes. Uh, nothing should happen, um, again, uh, in a room you know, where, um, uh, only the police are, or in a room where only uh, concerned citizens are. Um, you know, this uh, should be uh, scrutinized by all in a public fashion. Um, and so, I would like to again um, at our next meeting start working on uh, you know the language uh, or in, in drafting a motion or resolution uh, with respect to the consensus recommendations. 
Um, do uh, any other counselors or uh, guests, um, esteemed and distinguished guests, have uh, any last comments or, or words? Uh, Chief Fasaro? Uh, Chief Fasaro? Yeah, I, I just trying to shut my camera off there so I don't lose bandwidth. Just a question. If, if we're required, uh, or if, if, if we're invited to be at future meetings, will there be an agenda or some way um, that I can better prepare for this uh, so that I know what's going to be asked of us and our staff? Um, obviously, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to have, um, you know, Captain or, or Deputy Chief um, um, on this if, if, if they, if there's no requirement for them or if there's not an area where they, uh, uh, they, they may not have an expertise, I certainly don't want to have them or I'd want to put someone on who does. So I, I guess my question is, if, if there's a requirement or a need for us to participate, um, will I have a little bit of idea where what, what, you're, what you're looking for from us so that we can provide the best uh, person and the best information? A absolutely. What I would uh, recommend uh, to uh, fellow counselors is any questions you have uh, for the chief or the police department as a whole, um, uh, please refer those questions to uh, the, the town manager and please also include uh, your fellow uh, committee members on that distribution that way, um, we, um, you know, we are not uh, aware of those questions and we can uh, work together and collaboratively because uh, ultimately uh, my goal is to get um, language uh, passed unanimously out of this committee. Uh, and um, uh, get something on the desk of our council that has um, has the capacity to pass unanimously with our council. Uh, I know that that's uh, it, it seldom do we see that the you know that those moments in, in you know our our town council. But um, you know I I hope um, we can strive to do that. So please, uh, any questions you may have for the police chief, uh, deputy chief Gately, or any member of the police department, as well as uh, town manager Burt. Send those questions over to John, John uh, to Manager Burt, uh, with uh, your committee member CC'd on the, that email. Uh, and um, uh, if any counselors have issues with that, um, please speak with me uh, offline. Um, but I just knowing you both, I, I don't think that that will be a problem. But again, don't want to speak for either one of you. Uh, any other uh, last words or comments? Uh, seeing none, again, thank you so much for, uh, thank you so much to everyone uh, who participated in tonight's meeting. Uh, again, hats off to uh, Cork uh, Chair Thomas for your, um, your work and your collaboration. Uh, it, it's been a privilege working with you. I've learned a lot from you uh, throughout this process. Uh, and, um, you know, the report again is uh, the, uh, you know, is something that is uh, publicly available. Uh, I know it was um, uh, distributed far and wide by uh, the um, um, by the uh, uh, city. I'm sorry, the town clerk. Um, but one one last question, uh, Manager Burt. Um, what is the best way for the public, for those watching, to um, uh, read the report? Uh, is it available on the town website? Uh, <clears throat> You know, I thought it was, I can't swear to it. I'd have to double check. I was thinking it was, but I can't swear to that. I'll check in the morning and make sure it's there. So uh, what, it um, should also if, be in if the RTM I'm, minutes. The RTM minutes, and it should also be um, in your minutes as well. Yeah. But, I'll make, but I'll make sure it's placed out there. Absolutely. And what I'll do is for uh, uh, today's meeting minutes, I will include uh, that the Cork report uh, as uh, an addendum, uh, if that's okay with um, uh, Chair Chair Thomas. Uh, yeah, that's totally fine. Thank you. Awesome. Well, uh, again, thank you so much to everyone. Um, I will. Uh, oh, uh, Councilor Bordelon. No, I was waving bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, with that, uh, before uh, you say goodbye, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. Uh, we will adjourn at 8.45. Thank you, everyone. Good night, have, everyone. Uh, have a wonderful Good night. evening. Good night. Good night. Goodbye. Thank you.